dear colleagues, my name is Jörg Ender and I'm the head of department of anesthesiology and intensive care medicine. In the next 15 to 20 minutes, I want to talk about the 3D acquisition of the audio. But before I start my talk, I want to thank the organizers for inviting me. So during that talk, I will talk about uh, 2D standard views for the aortic valve, the challenges of 3D acquisition, especially for the aortic valve, and give you some tricks how to optimize a 3D image. My hospital receives big consulting honorary on behalf of mine from Edward, Edward's Life Science, Medela, and we are reference customers from Philips. So if you look at the 2D standard views, you know that we have four views in the mid-esophageal position for the aortic valve, and we have two views for the transgastric. Basic principle that challenges of the imaging of the aortic valve is that, you see that right here, sure. that the relatively thin and less echo-dense cusps of the normal aortic valves are surrounding, surrounded by the relatively thick and echo-dense tissue of the aortic root. And no matter which position you have in the medicine position of the probe, you will always have to pass that echo-dense structure. That is in contrast to the Matulov where in the mid-esophageal position, your uh, transducer is here and you have a good view of the mitral valve. So aortic valve is much more challenging. And you know, the basic principles of 2D is a cross-sectional view. And you see, even if that is, the, the tissue of the aortic valve is as thick and equidense as here, with 2D, you really can see different. In 3D, you see that here, especially if you look at the anatomical display here, it's hardly hard to see. So we have the right coronary cusp, the left coronary, the non-coronary cusp here. And if you look at the 2D views here, which are simultaneously displayed in this video, you nicely see the cusps like in the 2D. The 3D imaging of the valve is a little bit important. I will just start that video again, just to concentrate on that view. Just a moment. So you see that here, you have the full bead acquisition. And then you turn the image with that turn, yeah. Okay, you have it, and then you can set turn to visualize it here. Now you have the short axis, the aortic valve. This is the short axis in the um, 3D image with a two dimensional display like NPO. Another problem for 3D imaging of the aortic valve is dropouts. Dropouts due to calcification, like in this case here. Now the dropouts in 2D, see so that here, the shadowing, and also in the long axis. And of course, you have the dropouts in 3D because 3D is based on 2D imaging. And if the 2D image is not good or has dropouts, then you will have the dropouts as well in 3D image. And you can increase, if you increase the gain, you see that here you hardly see anything of valve. If you decrease the gain, like in this image, you see a lot of holes here, which are caused by dropouts due to the calcification. But sometimes, in some patients, you can get beautiful 3D. You see that here. Example, 3D tricuspid aortic valve. This is 
miniature monocast layout without even full volume, and here it's a still frame with a full zoom. So you can get beautiful images somewhere. So the basics for 3D acquisition, as I have mentioned before, is good 2D image quality. Second, good 2D image quality. Third, good 2D image That is the main thing you should focus on before you activate one of the 3D modes. So in the basic for 2D, I'm pretty sure you, you know that, that is just a repetition, is the structure of interest should be centered. And if we look at the Mississippi Geal views of the Arctic valve, the Arctic valve is centered in the Mississippi Geal long axis and on the short axis. It's not centered in the five chamber and the long axis. For sure, you can modify the five chamber view by turning the probe a little bit more to the right so that you have your Arctic valve here in the center like it is displayed here. The next thing is you do the machine settings code. So that means you adjust the depth, but you really don't have too much depth which you don't need. You have to look at the focus, which is this whole thing. So that the focus is really at the level of your valve. And of course, you should adapt the frequency of the probe. In the busy Virgil views, normally you have the best quality if it's in the general mode. In the transgastric views, the same thing, the same principle, machine shedding settings should be correct. And you see, if, like in this case, the optic valve is not really very centered, you can do a flex probe to the left, so that the probe is more at the apex of the left ventricle, and you see the optic valve more or less centered. And then the focus again, of course, in the penalty. But despite all these 2D imaging uh, improvements of the quality of the image, transgastric views are not good views for three-dimensional display of the aortic valve because the depth you can't change. So it's always relatively low in your 3D image. That means that the quality of the 3D image is not. And if you look at the technical aspects during data acquisitions, that was touched by the previous speakers, of course, you have real-time live 3D, either a narrow sector or sector zoom mode, or you have a multi-plane or uh, for the Philips thing, the X-plane display of two uh, dimensional images, and you have EKG triggered multiple feed acquisition, either with or with And the clue for image optimization is you have to adjust the gain, of course. So avoid over gain. If possible, avoid under gain. But in this, in this patient, which I saw, uh, showed you also before, you can not have a good optimization in between. So sometimes it's not really possible to get good images. Then if you do, good um, recording with multiple beats, you should avoid stitch artifacts. And stitch artifacts can be rhythm artifacts or it can be respiratory artifacts. Not respiratory artifacts are easy to treat for us as cardiac anesthesiologists. You just have to stop the ventilator. Rhythm artifacts can be judged. And I will tell you what you can do. Poor resolution. That is, of course, if your area of interest is not in the right plane, so not orthogonal. And um, if the depth, as I mentioned in the transcast reviews, is too low. What to do? So you always have to balance between temporal versus spatial resolution and the standard APG. So you see on the lower display of your app, you have that where you can change the relationship between resolution and speed on the uh, time temporal resolution. I would recommend not to change anything because in my mind, it isn't 
really helpful to change that. Maybe you can discuss that uh, with other speakers, but my preference is not to change that. But of course, to, to work with multiple beat acquisition. Well, and for that, I find it really, ha really helpful to change your display, not only to 3D, but also to this mode where you have 3D volume here and uh, the, the um, cyclosome and the coronary and the transverse plane simultaneously so that you really see if there's a stitch artifact. If you look here, then you can see here, this structure is not really uh, very good to hear. Here you have a step between this and this tissue. So that is a stitch artifact due to intervention. This is a stitch artifact, as you can see here on the EKG, U to extra system, which is even more pronounced, you see that here. That indicates that you have a stitch artifact. And that is a perfect four bead acquisition. And you see also in the 2D images, there is no interruption in the imaging. So I will just go back and forth. So look at that. So you see that here in the movie. There, this is the stitch artifact here. This is the stitch artifact. Extrasystole, and this is perfect. No stitch artifact because it was recorded with breath hold and the patient had a stable rhythm. So the temporal resolution between 2D and 3D with the, let's say, older X7 PT Pro, see that here, you have uh, 53 Hertz in 2D and you have one beat acquisition, 20 hertz or volume rates in by using the one beat acquisition with the X7. And if you use a four beat acquisition, you end up with 77 hertz, which is even higher resolution than the two. This is for one beat acquisition, that is for four beat acquisition. If you use the X8, 2D probes, so the newer one, then you get much higher frame rates. So one beat, 26, with two beats, 52, and with four beats, 100 meters, which is really very, very good. But you repeat with multiple beat and acquisition, you have the risk for stitch on. You can even with the X8 to be do a six speed acquisition. And here you have the videos, four speed, six speed. You see that the temporal resolution between these both are the same. Both have 100 hertz. And alternative, if you have a patient with really unstable rhythm, is that you during before acquisition you change to high volume rate acquisition, which is in fact, a one beat acquisition, but with a higher uh, temporal, but with a lower spatial resolution. And if you compare these three images, just take, take a second. You see that this looks a little bit smoother. And that is due to the fact that the spatial resolution here, in this case, is low. That so that is the highest resolution, temporal and spatial, especially spatial. This is the same temporal, but a little bit lower spatial resolution. But for the clinical practice, six speed acquisition is really challenging, especially in the EOR, uh, because you need really six consecutive heartbeats which are regular and no touch on the patient, whatever which can interfere with your EKG signal. It's always uh, R wave triggered. So if you have a disturbance in your EKG here, you will end up with stitch artifact. So for us routinely, we aim in patients with stable rhythm for four beat acquisition. So once again, the comparison between 
seven and x eight. So you see in one bit acquisition, 20 to 26, four bit 77. So I think it's worth to invest more money. In sure. If you would just, if you apply color Doppler, it's even worse. So you see that here, four bit acquisition using the X7 probe, you have nine hertz. And the X8 probe, you have end up with 35 hertz. 35 hertz is, is a good temporal resolution where you hardly miss anything, any, any jet. Yes. So what is recommended? These are the, the guidelines extended which were published in 2012. For acquisition of the Arctic Mouth, the AV short axis and the AV long axis can be used. With the long axis, you have to turn the probe so that you have the optic valve and the short axis. And with 3D, for sure, you can turn that image so that you have a look at the optic valve from the optic view or from the LVT. With the display, the RCC in both views should be on the bottom of the image, so it's six o'clock. So, and this is, uh, if you start in the middle of the GLAV short axis, you immediately have your display of the optic path. You start in the long axis or in that modified five channel, which I showed you at the beginning. You have to turn your image, like you see that here, so that you can see the optic path. Otherwise, because it's anatomically, like here, you won't see anything of the object. So there is a rotation needed electronically for the optic valve display. For the AV long axis, we do it clockwise, for starting from the middle of the GF5 gender, we start it. You have to, to rotate counterclockwise. I would recommend to use the best 2D view of these three to start with AV uh, acquisition of 3D images of the Arctic lab. No matter if we start on the AVX, short axis on the long axis or the middle. So then if you start like here, it's the 3D scene mode, you have to uh, identify the origin of interest. And you sh it should be big enough to visualize the complete stru structure, but it shouldn't be too big. Otherwise, uh, because then if your 3D zoom sector is too wide, uh, then the frame rate will go. So just optimize it. You see, with that, that size, it may be too low. With that size here, it's good because you have the sinusoidal junction and you have the LVT. That would, last one would be too large. Then you have that lateral position. See that with the not position, you place here in your short axis the region of interest so that your optic valve is centered. Okay, and then you will have the optic valve centered also in this case. So for this, I think the uh, region of interest is large enough okay. here because you have the sinusoidal junction within the image and you have the LVOT. You can change the elevation position, position on the lower panel, panel of your epic system. You see? And you have three positions, back, middle, or front. This is back position. And then if you press the button, you have this moment. So that is middle position, and that is front position. So if you record it in the back or in the front, you hardly get the whole logic valve into that. So please look in your machine settings. I would recommend that you always have a mid position uh, in that elevation uh, position. To have a quick view of the logic valve, and you can look at that here in 3D zoom. 
define your starting view, your, your viewpoint, and then the direction where you look at, and then you see the Arctic mouth in the shown axis from here to there. You can also do that from the LVOG. That is from the LVOG. If you want to look at the Arctic mouth very quick from the LVOG here to the ascending order, you do it like that. Do that, and then you have to turn it, set, and here you have the interior micro leaflet. And below there, that is the which is in this example not good to see, but we will come to that. There's in the newer machines, um, the so called true view available. It's a different kind of display of the uh, object out. See that here. In which looks more like tissue. See here, I try to put uh, out. And with that true view, you can have touch view as well. Touch view is that you have start a flashlight. You see that here, and with by pressing your the, the, your finger on the image here. You can change the position of the flashlight here, you see here and here. It should highlight any holes or degree vegetations or whatever. My opinion it doesn't help so much, but maybe there are other opinions in the department. Be sure that. If the 3D imaging is really not good, you can always use either the explain or multiplane visualization, where by positioning of your sector, you can change the displayed image on the right side, normally by 90 degrees. So here, especially for the optic valve, you see the sector here right now is cutting through the right coronary and the non coronary cusp that is displayed here. And if you place your sector here on the right side to the right and the low, uh, left coronary cusp, you see that here. And of course, that NPR modus can you always use also in your 3D acquisition. So, how can you optimize your image? So, here you have three, the same patient, that was right after acquisition. And you see that here, that the aortic mouth is hard to see. Then you crop, so that means you cut away all that tissue, which is an obstacle to, to look really at the aortic mouth, which is it's done here. So here you have half to cropping. And then you adjust the gain and maybe a little bit smoothing. And then you see right coronary, the left, and the much better than at the beginning. So that needs a little bit of training and it's hard to, to tell you that in an online lecture, I would be happy to, to go with you that, with that uh, when we have a personal meeting, but I hope it's convincing. So first do the acquisition, then you crop to visualize the structure you want to see in this case, the cloud, and then you adjust the game and maybe a little bit smoothing to have a good 3D image. But that quality here in the 3D image doesn't have an influence if you go to the multiple plane reconstruction, which we will see in the next talk by looking at the clinical applications. So again, you see, you have seen that. So it is sometimes in some patients really possible to get beautiful images by optimizing the game, by use cropping and smoothing. And then you will have quite a good 3D imaging display. So to conclude, 3D imaging of the audio offers unique imaging planes. The quality of the images, of course, depends on 3D quality of equipment and skilled echocardiographer and mainly on post processing. And due to the anatomical conditions, could 3D images of the optic valve 
are much harder to achieve compared to the mind. So if you want to see that live, uh, then please come to Leipzig next year, June 22nd, either in person or virtually, where we'll, we'll have a Leipzig Perio operative team masterclass with a uh, live transmission from the OR with three cameras, one showing the upper choreographer and what he does with the probe, so the PE probe handling. Sim uh, simultaneously, you will see the resulting pictures in high, high quality. And then the next camera, which is on the uh, ultrasound machine, which shows the manipulation of the nobologies to get the best images. So uh, looking forward to see you next year in Leipzig. Thank you for your attention.